Hello, my name is Kevin File and I'm a student at the University of Central Florida. Today I will be presenting our work on user perception with the video see-through head-mounted display. For decades, researchers have studied a phenomenon where people tend to misjudge distances significantly worse in the presence of virtual stimuli. Specifically, this misjudgment manifests itself in people underestimating distances. This result has been observed in virtual reality and optical see-through augmented reality devices, with researchers pointing to field of view, weight, camera height, quality of graphics, and presence of self-avatars as some reasons for this discrepancy. However, there is a lack of work that uses video see-through AR devices to study this effect. Unlike optical see-through devices, which allow the user to see the real world normally, Video see-through devices let the user see the real world through live video displayed on a screen in front of their eyes. Our main research interest for this work is understanding how users perceive real-world distances through this type of device. Leaders in academia and industry are increasingly using video see-through devices for a variety of applications, including entertainment, remote guidance for manufacturing tasks, augmentation of daily life experiences, and even eyesight correction. Thus, it is important to understand if there are perceptual discrepancies with these devices, especially as applications are trending towards boundless environments. Therefore, we conducted a user study to help understand differences in perception of the real world when viewing it through a video see-through device or that one. Our study was three by four within subjects, resulting in 12 conditions. One independent variable was device, and the other was target distance. Device had three levels, nothing, where no device was worn, video see-through, where the users wore an HTC Vive with Z Mini attachment, and shell, where a stripped-down Oculus Rift was worn on their head. We used distances in accordance with previous work, three, four, five, and six meters. We use an indoor lab setting for our environment. We use a blind tossing procedure where participants close their eyes and threw a beanbag to a target on the floor for each of the 12 conditions. Each condition was conducted three times for a total of 36 trials. The participants had practiced throwing beanbags before data collection. Our participant pool included 24 males and two females. If participants used corrective lenses, they were required to wear them for all trials. Per condition, we averaged the error of the three trials for a total of 12 data points per participant. We ran a repeated measure ZANOVA on our data and found a significant main effect of each independent variable, but we did not find an interaction effect. Post hoc t-tests revealed that video see-through and shell conditions significantly differed from the nothing conditions, but they did not differ from each other. Naturally, participants exhibited more error as target distance grew. Although prior work shows how distance underestimation is a non-issue with the HTC Vive, we found that adding the Z Mini to the setup resulted in the problem manifesting itself again. The Z Mini offers an extremely high resolution, so we don't anticipate that to be an underlying cause. It is possible that its extra 63 grams is a contributor, or the fact that the addition of the camera disrupted the weight of distribution of the Vive. However, as the shell was also significantly different than normal viewing, we're confident that a reduced field of view is the main culprit. Though the Vive has a field of view of 110 by 90 degrees, the Z Mini reduces this to 90 by 60. As we look to the exemplars of current video see-through HMDs, we note that the fields of view for each of them are restricted when compared to the displays, which boast over 110 degrees. An implication for device manufacturers is to further development of the imaging devices so that the field of view is maximized. But we also know that field of view reductions help prevent simulator sickness. Since some of the targeted applications of video see-through devices include continuous exposure in mobile settings, we want to emphasize that we must now work to balance physical user safety and risk of simulator sickness. Future work will help tackle these issues so that we can successfully deploy these powerful applications beyond the laboratory. Thank you for tuning into my presentation.